Welcome back to the channel. It's been a good week this week so far. Today is Thursday, race day, TT race day. So not one where I'm going to be staying with the group for very long, I wouldn't think. Hoping I can settle into a rhythm and just pace myself. Having said that, I'm feeling really tired this afternoon. It's almost like I hit a wall at lunchtime. I just, you know, I've just been yawning, rubbing my eyes, all sorts, just feeling tired. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to give it my best shot anyway. So I'm going to get changed, jump on the bike, and I'll see you there. This race is two laps of the Classic Reverse in London. Not too long a race. I think about 18 kilometers in total. You can see already I've been well left. So the difference between a TT race and a normal race for me is that in a normal race, I'd push everything I had to stay in with a draft. Obviously, you don't get any draft on a TT bike in a TT group. So I just thought I'm going to settle in nice and steady for this. One thing that I've struggled with a lot in my rides recently, I talk about it a few times, is my spiky power graph, especially the later we go on into rides. I approach this very differently to what I've done in other TT races before or any other ride, to be honest. And I thought I'm going to try and put out 200 watts average for the duration of this ride and then where I'll come where I come. Um, you can see already everyone's over like 11 seconds up the road ahead of me, the front runners. But yeah, 200 watts for the, the duration of the ride. And to achieve that, I actually decided to lower my trainer difficulty to zero. So I wasn't affected at all by the hills. I just wanted to try and keep a consistent power source or power output, I should say, for the entirety of the ride. Because I thought I might benefit a bit better if I started training that. So uh, yeah, we'll see how I got on with that. Got a couple of other people also I've got the videos for. Uh, Pavel in the, uh, well, there isn't any categories today, really. where It's an all a mass start, but Pavel, uh, I've got a video from him. And also the video from Chris Waring as well. So you can see Chris is on the front runners here at the moment. I think N. Corbin is slightly up front. C. Swan and then C. Waring in third. Jonesy's just behind Eric at the moment, three seconds behind. It's unusual not to see him flying off at the front, but let's we can uh, we can at least keep an eye on some of the other people further up the road than me at the back. As with a few of the London routes, this has got that long lead in before we even hit uh, the first or the lap banner to start the first lap. We're with Chris Waring here, putting out five watts a kilo up this hill. N Corbin flying off the front, six watts getting up this six watts per kilo getting up this hill. Uh, Eric slowly or, or close that gap to one second with C Swan and then Jonesy. We can pop back and also have a look at Pavel, who's on his way up the hill too. He's just ahead of Chris Jupp and old Noel Slevin in there as well. And if we go back to me, I'm still nowhere near that hill. Uh, what am I? I'm, I've got C Cole just in front of me. Uh, C Cross 10 seconds behind. Uh, I didn't kind of... As I said, you can see, I, I'm trying to keep my power constant, and you can see how constant it has been. There's a few dips up and down, but I'm trying my best to keep that level. Um, and I kind of didn't really pay too much attention during the race where I was in relation to other riders, because I just thought I'm going to use this as a training exercise. I did uh, catch C. Cole here and take over for a little while as well. But uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with my efforts so far. I've backed off a little bit here. Uh, but I definitely raise that back up again. What's important to me is not to have those stops where I have to stop pedaling. Certainly not in the first, you know, few minutes of this race. I want to try and get as long as I can with as consistent pedal stroke, consistent power as I possibly can. Eric did catch and overtake Chris for a second, but Chris put a bit of effort out and has moved back into second and slowly reeled in N Corbin at the front as well. Eric putting out 4.4 watts behind Jonesy and Chris also putting big watts out over four watts per kilo uh, back seven seconds and 13 as well back to Pavel look at that oh do you look at my graph just green <laughs> Pavel's is all orange and red incredible effort uh he's three seconds behind Chris and he's got C Swan eight seconds behind and as normally happens in these races they kind of get quite strung out obviously no one's benefiting from draft it's a very much a solo effort throughout and you we kind of get spread out across the across the route but uh you have to dig very very deep 
mentally as well to try and push yourself as hard as possible. It's good to have be able to see people in front to give you a bit of a challenge. But as you can see, I'm keeping that graph at the bottom nice and steady, keeping quite focused. It's probably I keep looking up to my top left to keep an eye on that number. Uh, it's probably one of the most focused I've been in a race for a while. So after seven and a half kilometres, Chris is finally getting to the start line uh, to start the first of three laps. The first one to get there. He's got a two seconds lead over Eric, four seconds now over N Corbin, Jonesy and Chris, nine seconds and 14 seconds back. Back 20 seconds to Pavel, still all orange red, just about to come over to start the first lap as well. Awesome effort. No, 11 seconds back. Chris, I think they've swapped now. Noel has uh, overtaken Chris one, 14 seconds back. And then back to me. I'm not even close to any of the other guys. Seacross has overtaken me. He's, he's gone up the road 14 seconds ahead. I did I did uh, uh, have him behind me for a little while, but uh, yeah, I've fallen behind. 14 seconds behind. Let's see if I can continue this effort just to keep out a consistent power. You can see I'm doing it quite easily now. It's, it's steadied off. There was a little bit of blue zone earlier on, but uh, oh, just, just as I say that, I dropped off slightly. Uh, I'm down to 160 odd watts, but... Uh, Still trying to keep those legs turning and keep them moving. 10 kilometers gone. Chris has still got Eric just on his tail. Jonesy now in third has overtaken N Corbin. They're still putting out big numbers behind with Chris Jupp, who's, I think that gap has closed since we last saw, uh, putting out 4.2. He's 15 seconds behind. Back to Pavel, who has got Noel now 18 seconds behind and, and D Stark 26 seconds behind. So, Creating a bit of a, a gap for himself here, Pavel. I wonder if he can catch Chris just in front. Again, all red zone effort. And uh, I'm finally, here I am, finally coming over the line to start the first lap. Coming down towards the end of the first lap, you can see Eric now attempting to overtake Christopher. Uh, I noticed Eric is showing on the screen as on a Tron bike. Uh, I know Zwift sometimes does uh, a funny thing where if you go into the pen and haven't changed your bike in advance, if you then change it in the pen on some other people's screens, it doesn't refresh. Maybe that has happened this time. Look at these two riding together. We've got Jonesy 16 seconds behind. Chris now riding pretty much with Jonesy. Uh, and they've got a little gap over N Corbin as they come round to finish the end of the first lap. Pavel not too far behind as well. Look at that graph. That's a, a graph I dream of. High level effort and pretty solid and steady. Uh, talking about checking graphs. I'm keeping it as steady as I can. I just wish it was orange and red. <laughs> just here, managed to catch uh, C Cross. Uh, I've overtaken. I don't know whether he struggled a bit for a while. Just with the effort. I was trying, as I said, I was trying to be constant. I, I didn't have any design as i said at the beginning to attempt to overtake anybody to try and catch anyone it, this was just a solo effort for me trying to keep a steady effort uh so i've managed to catch c cole and c cross although c cole i think uh only riding for uh not racing tonight essentially but uh yeah i'm nine and a half kilometers in quite some distance behind those guys at the front of the race and talking about the front of the race you can see eric's put out a bit of a blast Got himself a four second lead. Chris now, it's a bit changed behind. So Chris in fifth, with 15 second uh, behind. I don't know what's happened to Jonesy. He's dropped the power, dropped to zero. I hope everything's okay. But that puts Chris into third. Chris Jupp, I should say. N Corbin, 30 seconds behind Chris. Pavel now moves up in the ranking slightly to fifth. And here is Pavel. You can just see N Corbin two seconds ahead of him. Let's stay with this for a couple of minutes and see if... Uh, he can catch, although Aang Corbin has just stepped it up to over four, four watts a kilo again. So maybe he'll keep that gap for a little bit. And go back to me, you can see just, I've got a sea coal riding with me at the moment. I've got a 12 second lead. I've managed somehow to pull out over sea cross behind. You can see I just had a bit of a dip in my power there. I am starting to struggle a little bit at this point, but I'm still going. I haven't stopped pedalling. I'm <laughs> still giving it what I can. Uh, and we're 20 minutes in, so I've kind of I've kind of done what I would consider to be quite a good effort here. Just be, any of the guys who normally watch know how up and down my power is. To hold that for 20 minutes, I'm pretty chuffed with it. 
The guys at the front getting towards the end of the race then, like Eric is just about to come over, go over the line, six seconds ahead of Chris Waring. C. Juck, 23 seconds back, and then back to N. Corbin, who put out that incredible burst at the start. Couldn't quite hold on and keep the uh, the gap at the front. Fallen back slightly, and we head back to Pavel as well, who was closing that gap slowly to N. Corbin. A four-second lead, I think, at this point is going to be too large to overturn but look at that graph at the bottom a huge effort i'd love to see some other people's graphs and how they do it because they look so so different to my normal ones uh, but i think that's going to go to n corbin and then pavel i didn't realize quite how far <laughs> how close they were i should say to catching me uh unlapping me i just about got over the line to start my final lap when they finished uh, but I've got C. Cole in front, who's who's now gone off ahead. Uh, C. Cross has closed that gap right down to eight seconds, and a couple of drop offs in my power. But I'm still happy that I'm keep it, keeping it pretty constant. If anything, I'm probably slightly higher power than what I was doing in the rest of the race, into the sort of two tens to two twenties for a little while here as well. And with three point seven kilometers to go, C. Cross, incredible effort has caught me and overtaken. I had a couple of moments where the power is slightly dropping off. I am struggling a little bit at the moment, but I'm still trying my best just to return to that steady pace uh, and keep it going for as long as possible. But yeah, Seacross has overtaken and he's disappearing off up the road at quite a fast speed. That's an over three watts per kilogram there. Incredible effort. We're into the final 700 metres and Seacross got that gap up to over 10 seconds. Uh, and I've gradually pulled it back. You can see I I saw him in front, and this is the point where I thought, okay, I'm going to see what I can do and try and catch. Gradually ramped it up through the orange into red zone effort with the hope to, to bring that gap down as much as possible. And then I realised in this last few hundred metres, I've got a chance to catch down to a second uh, in the last 400 metres of the race. And I kind of realised that I... I'd kind of burnt all my matches. I didn't really have much in my legs to sprint. I was hoping that I'd managed to beat him. But then all of a sudden, you could see over 10.5 watts per kilo. And I thought, I can't counter, can I? So I tried to put down a bit more effort up into the red zone there. I was, I was nearly at 600 watts there. And I thought, no, I, I can't. Coasted for a bit. And then he stopped. So I don't know why that was. Um, but amazing effort. It meant I somehow got over the line ahead. But that, that position was definitely... See across his position. Um, but the good thing about that there is that ramp up that you can see. I just went through the greens, into the orange, up into the reds, and there's no dropping off. I could keep the cadence going. There was no dropping off. Hard effort, dropping off, hard effort. So I think overall, a pretty good effort at trying to keep things steady, which is something I'm really not very good at. Let's have a look at the results then. Eric winning it in the end with an eight second lead over C. Waring, who was pretty constant and consistent throughout. Incredible effort. Siege up over four watts per kilo for the length of that race. Another great effort. N. Corbin, who went out slightly early, couldn't quite keep that gap in fourth. PZ Zoo with his wonderful red power graph in fifth. N. Slevin sixth. D. Stark seventh. C. Swan eighth. Jonesy in 9th, P. Morris 10th, D. Taylor 11th, everyone pretty well spread out here, uh, W. Piatek in 12th, H. Ten Plaza 13th, J. Robinson just a few seconds behind in 14th, Craig 15th, 30 minutes and 12 seconds, Rob C. in 16th, 30-34, just a couple of seconds behind I. Davies, S. Pi back racing, in the TTs, good to have you back, Sam. In 18th, 19th, C. Shand, 30-44 as well. Those two sprinting to the line must have been great to watch. A. Hugovin, A. Mott, 21st. O'Hanel, 22nd. Again, a couple of seconds behind A. Mott. H. Sophocleus, 23rd. J. Gilligan, 24th. Then me, uh, who should really have finished behind C. Cross at the end there in 26th. And C. Cole just in for the ride tonight in 27th. Overall, I'm quite pleased with that. Managed to set a target of keeping that graph as level as possible. As you know, it's something I've usually struggled with and I thought I would towards the end of the race, but managed to keep it 
quite flat. A couple of dips in there, but I'm quite happy I did that and probably something I should work on going forward. Maybe it will help me in, in other races and other efforts as well. So I'll take that on board and kind of think about it. I was going to do a more detailed breakdown of the riding I've done this week. I've done nearly 125 kilometers, which is the most I've done since uh, about September time, I think, this week. So I'm really pleased that I've kind of got back on the bike more. I did a couple of the Tour and Mercury routes, uh, a nice casual pace, sort of zone two. And I don't tend to do rides like that and jump on and do them at the moment. So really pleased I've upped it. But I want to keep this outro pretty short because I've had on Friday, I was supposed to have fibre to the house internet installed for the same price as what we're paying now. It's kind of a free upgrade. They came, they couldn't fit the fibre cable down because the ducting was blocked underneath the front garden. And when they left, I've now got worse internet than when they started. So uploading videos and downloading videos is proving to be a bit of a difficulty. So I'm going to keep this video as short as possible to get it uploaded. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm trying to get on the bike more. I'm being good with my diet. And I have been good with my diet as well, keeping the calories as low as what I suggested I was going to, trying to keep a thousand calorie deficit if I do exercise in that day. So it's all going well and I'm feeling quite good. I do get moments of tiredness. I feel quite tired. Um, I think that's just my body getting used to eating less calories than what I was stuffing in it, you know, a week or two ago. Um, but I'm sure we'll see how that goes over the coming weeks. Huge thank you to all of the channel members as usual. I want to also mention that next week is the end of month on a Sunday when we do the Bandy Group Ride special. There will be a poll on Facebook about what route we will do uh, next Sunday, but it's a sort of addition to our normal Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday rides. But all the information is in the description below. But that is the end of this video. If you have enjoyed it, do hit like and subscribe. And hopefully I'll have faster internet and I'll be able to get a video up quicker next time.